everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're joining me today. Um, today we're going to start a very exciting series that I have personally been very much looking forward to. Um, I've actually been counting down the days until I get to talk about this. <laughs> so if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I just want to start by saying this. I will be working through this whole series on there as well. And I tend to add a few more details on Instagram and social media than I do in podcasts. Um, it depends on the topic, but for this one in particular, I'm going to be sharing things in stories that I, I won't be talking about here on the podcast. So I highly recommend going over there, giving me a follow so you can check out those um, in case you want more information. We will be talking for the next few weeks about preparing for your baby. Um, walking you through all four trimesters, and yes, there are four trimesters, <laughs> sharing some insight that might help you through your pregnancy and help your recovery after labor and delivery go much smoother. Now, I've never been pregnant. I've never been blessed with that, but I hope and pray that one day I will be. So all of the information that I will be sharing with you, like all of the information that I normally share, is highly researched, and all of the um supplements and think well I'm not I'm not recommending any supplements but you know the the practices that I will be sharing with you guys are proven effective in most individuals um, we can't blanket statement and say all but most and even though I've never experienced this miracle myself I've been very blessed in my career to be able to work with mamas of all ages um, plus if this means anything I'm also a prenatal and postpartum exercise specialist <laughs> so let's get into it um, the exciting and precious journey has begun. We're starting with the first trimester. It's time for you to start thinking about your body um, to support the growth of your baby if you haven't already. You probably have already been thinking about this if you've been following my podcast for a while and you've been preparing the way you should. Um, you're like, oh yeah, Amanda, I already know what I'm doing. I already know how to prepare and take care of my body. I've been doing it for years. Um, so that's great. That's awesome. You're already on the fast track to success. There is a lot to consider, which is why I want to break this down into a four-part series, just so I don't overwhelm you too fast, um, especially if you're a new mom, if this is your first baby. Plus, you know what? Down the road, this is all going to help me as well when I do end up getting to this point myself. So in this episode, we'll be talking about how to control nausea and other side effects of the first trimester. I hate using that word, side effects, but that's kind of what it is. Um, we're going to talk about tailored exercise programming, some stress management, and um, healthy foods to start adding in if you don't eat them already, which again, if you've been following me for a while or if you've been really, really focused on your health and fitness, your whole wellness routine, um, you're probably already doing this already. But for those of you who aren't, hopefully this will give you uh, a better idea of what to what to incorporate into your life during this really important time. So let's go ahead and start with fitness. If you have any health complications, obviously having a clearance from your doctor or midwife is so important before beginning any kind of workout program, especially if you're starting something new. Um, if you haven't been exercising before getting pregnant, this is really something you're going to have to talk to your doctor about because getting into something new is often uh, discouraged. So that's something you're going to have to have a discussion about. This includes those with at-risk pregnancies as well. If you know you're an at-risk pregnancy, it's definitely important for you to pay attention and discuss things with your doctor beforehand. Um, you can still do workouts that you were doing before, but minor adjustments might have to be made because what you're doing is you are your body is changing. Your body is changing you've got different hormones flowing through your body at different times. This is not like a menstrual phase. You are actually, or a menstrual cycle, you are actually growing another human being. So it's really important that you make the adjustments where necessary. And there are a lot of women who would not do that. And it's, it's not the healthiest thing. We'll just put it that way. Um, like I said, adding something out of the blue, like if you've never done any cardio, and all of a sudden you're pregnant and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to start doing cardio. That's not a good idea. I wouldn't add anything new that you've never done um, or that you haven't done on a regular basis. So just be smart about what you're doing with your fitness routines. <laughs> your 
biggest adversary is going to be fear. And um, breathing techniques are going to be a really good way to help you prepare for, well, prepare for labor and delivery, but also prepare your pelvic floor. I think this actually, I think I need to actually put in an episode in here and make it a five-part series talking about the pelvic floor because a lot of pregnancies are not taking care of the pelvic floor. I am seeing a huge surge in women, fitness trainers in particular, who are um, training women to take care of their pelvic floor and their um, abdominal muscles while they're pregnant so that when they are no longer pregnant, when they have delivered that baby, the diastasis um, recti exercises and all the pelvic floor programs, they're going to help a lot quicker because they've been working on it while they were pregnant. So I think I'm going to actually have a separate episode for that because it's so important. But yeah, fear is going to be your biggest adversary. Breathing techniques are going to be a really important thing to start incorporating, especially if you feel nausea. Breathing through it is really going to help a lot. Not, not, well, not a lot. It's going to help a little. (laughs) Um, So exercise is very important during your pregnancy. Um, It should be done in a very specific way. If you're not sure at all, that's a great time to hire a specialist like me who specializes in prenatal and postpartum care. But not a lot of people consider this one thing that I'm going to tell you. It's really important. Not a lot of people are going to tell you this even. In fact, I'm pretty sure half of the personal trainers out there don't even know this. But who knows? Maybe they're just ignoring it. Um, I feel like that's a really common theme is that people will just ignore stuff that they don't want to talk about or don't want to think about that is going to stop them from doing what they want to do. Now, you can make your own decision on that. That is totally fine, but I'm going to share a fact with you. If you're doing a heavy workout on the regular, just, you know, someone like me who's not pregnant, who is working with her menstrual cycle, if I am doing heavy workouts on regular, lifting heavy weights, what's happening in my body is the body transfers a large portion of the blood flow that's in your in your core, in your trunk, to the limbs in order to help you lift weights and perform exercise. This is a form of fight or flight. If you're in a fight or flight situation where you have to, say, lift a car off a human being, that fight or flight response is going to send blood flow to the limbs so that you can actually lift that car. Okay, this is a scientific fact. This is what happens. Now, we all know that when you are physically stressing your muscles, it causes a similar reaction as fight or flight, causing that stress response. Now, it doesn't do it to the, to the amount that you would if you had to lift a car off of a human being, but it's enough to draw blood flow away from your center. So, knowing this biological response to heavy weight lifting and working out and all that good stuff, You want to avoid drawing too much blood flow from your core, which is now growing a human. This is where your your baby resides and requires that blood flow by using intensely heavy workouts, okay? You want to avoid that a a lot. (laughs) Um, I see a lot of women who will be pregnant. They'll be lifting barbells over their head. They'll be doing minor CrossFits. They'll be doing heavy weightlifting and... Olympic weightlifters I've seen continue during pregnancy. Now, this is a very dangerous thing because not only are you putting your baby at risk if something bad happens, but you're also drawing that blood flow from where this baby is growing. So I would say heavy workouts should be modified. I'm not saying stop them altogether. I'm just saying maybe modify it to to the point of cutting down on the weight or cutting down on the reps or just something. And if you have any questions, obviously ask your doctor because that is going to be very, very important. Now, doctors, there will be doctors who will say, oh, no, it's totally fine. You can do that. I personally don't believe that that is a, a good a good thing to do. I don't think it's good, personally. After all the research that I've done, I think that women would get a better workout. They would have less bladder leaks, less pelvic floor problems less diastasis recti if they were to avoid the heavy workouts during pregnancy and were to just wait until after they recover. But that's just my opinion. So I don't recommend 
intense cardio. Um, cardio obviously is going to be really important, but intense cardio I would avoid. Um, running, jumping. I don't know why women feel like they have to do this, but if, I guess if it's okay with you, that's fine. But basically what happens during jumping is you're putting too much pressure on that pelvic floor. And when you put too much pressure on the pelvic floor, it makes the muscles down there relax, and that's where we get bladder leaks. So it's really important that if you decide to do running or jumping, that you are also counteracting it with pelvic floor exercises, because otherwise you're just going to have a whole bunch of problems when you have that baby. <laughs> and this is why we have a lot of women who are like, oh, I have bladder leaks, and I have... Um, rotated pelvis and I have all these problems. I'm like, well, I know why. <laughs> anyway, Tabata, hits those things, I would definitely say hold off until after recovery post-pregnancy, like the tail end of the fourth trimester. So try working in more gentle versions of these. Um, avoid the intensity level that they normally would put you in in just a regular situation. If you ever have a concern, I always say just go ask your doctor or midwife, any type of specialist or professional that you are, are speaking with, go and ask them. Listen to your body. Fatigue shouldn't be pushed through when you are pregnant, so take it easy. This isn't a cold. You are literally supporting another human being's growth. And so you don't want to push through that tiredness, that fatigue. There will be times that you can, and that's going to be up to your body. If your body's like, yep, I'm, I'm tired, but a workout would feel really good right now, then you go for it. But that's the part where you listen to your body. Um, I would never say exercise when you're sick anyway. So because this isn't a sickness, you're going to have to gauge how you feel day by day. <laughs> Some training tips for you. Some things that I recommend to women, especially in their first trimester, is walking, weight training, swimming, biking, and Pilates. I like weight training because it, it challenges the muscle groups, but I like functional weight training. Not just going and going to the gym and, and lifting weights. That's not what I mean. I mean like functional weight training that's going to mimic the daily movements that you make when you're going throughout your life okay um cutting down on the on the weight not lifting so heavy and making sure you build in isometrics eccentric holds and um slow controlled movements and that's going to you're going to see a lot more benefit from that and then obviously it's really important to hydrate avoid overheating so if you're living in florida like me i wouldn't exercise outside too much um, really support the joints and feet. That's going to be huge because your joints are going to become more lax uh, as your hormones change. So can, making sure that those joints are healthy and strong is going to be super important. And then just take it slow. Just really take it slow and give your body time to adjust because the first trimester is just an adjustment period. It's really important for you to just slow it down. And yes, your life will feel very, very different during this time, but that's okay. So give yourself grace and don't push too hard. All right, let's move on to morning sickness and nutrition. It can be really difficult in the first trimester to eat due to morning sickness and then food aversions when they come in. However, eating is so important. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to function. Um, it will depend on the person how much morning sickness affects them. And we'll talk about that in a second. But this is also a time to listen to your body and take things slow. Don't force yourself to do things if it's completely unable to do it. And that includes eating. Um, if you really cannot eat anything, smoothies and broth is going to be a really good, good thing to add in. Because that's going to give you your, your nutrients that you need. And you can drink it. And it might settle in your stomach a little bit better. But, you know, I, I talk about this in my, in my prenatal nutrition program. I have one that actually follows women through their whole pregnancy into postpartum and it's a nutrition but also a fitness program. So if you are curious and you want to check that out, you can do so. So some of the foods that you would let you would need to incorporate that include all of the good stuff that your body needs are 
greens, lots of greens, green leafy vegetables, nuts, cauliflower, beets, lean proteins, dairy, eggs, oranges, broccoli, strawberries, avocados, apricots, bananas, fatty fishes, uh, not raw fishes, not sushi, but fatty fishes like salmon and um, sardines, mackerel, things like that. Beans and lentils, ginger tea, cottage cheese, graham crackers, and berries. So you can notice that that whole list pretty much has all of the EFAs you need, you need, the essential fatty acids, as well as essential minerals and vitamins that your baby needs to grow. So nutrition is pretty amazing. It's really amazing. You can do a lot with nutrition, um, including help with morning sickness. I'm going to pose you a question here. Did you know that morning sickness can be a treated and eliminated naturally? A lot of people already know this but they don't necessarily know how. And so that's what I'm going to break down for you real quick. It depends on the severity of the morning sickness. Um, it depends on how balanced your hormones were before you became pregnant. That's really going to be a key indicator on the morning sickness. If your hormones were completely out of whack before you got pregnant, odds are there are going to be some problems um, during pregnancy, and one of those things can be morning sickness. I'm not, you know, speaking that over you. Just don't, just be aware that hormone imbalances, they don't just magically change when you get pregnant. Um, plus any underlying health conditions can also lead to morning sickness as well. So it just depends on what you're dealing with. And there will be people who will have completely crazy hormones, messed up hormones, and will have underlying health conditions and will have absolutely no morning sickness at all. So it doesn't, if this isn't for everybody, again, we don't blanket statement here. This isn't for everybody. It doesn't always ring true for everyone because everyone is different and everyone has different needs. But blood work can be one of those things that you might want to go through to see if you are low in any essential vitamins and minerals that might help um, with supplementation and nutrition. You can just replace those. Um, I, I think that if you do a blood panel before you decide to get pregnant or if you get pregnant and you're like, it's a surprise. Maybe doing some blood work during your first trimester would be a good idea just to see what needs support during the pregnancy. So these things are going to help with morning sickness. We've got alfalfa, fennel, ginger, kelp, peppermint, but after the first trimester. So I don't even know why it's in this. I forgot to delete that, I guess. You can't do peppermint in the first trimester, but you can do it after the first trimester. Meantime, you can do alfalfa, fennel, ginger, kelp red raspberry leaf, spearmint, and wild wild yam. I was about to say jam. That would be interesting. Really encouraging well-balanced hormones before you get pregnant will be the ultimate support for a healthy pregnancy, as well as keeping nausea at bay. But I'm not saying that we'll prevent it altogether because your hormones will naturally fluctuate and do their thing when you're pregnant. Um, but it could be the key factor in drastically improving the morning sickness. You just never know. And this isn't everything for the first trimester. I kind of want to end it here. But I hope that this gives you a great start to understanding how to proceed during your first trimester and at least how to plan on getting pregnant when you do end up deciding you want to have, to have a baby. Hopefully this will help you not only expect what's going to happen, but um, take care of yourself when you do get to that point. And again, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be posting this over on my Instagram. The next few weeks we'll be talking about this. Don't forget to check the stories um, because they do disappear and I don't always save them to a highlight. So you're going to want to see them right when I post them. So next week we're going to talk about the second trimester as well as breaking down some tough decisions on like whether or not to have a home birth, hospital birth, choosing a doctor, midwife, etc. We're going to be breaking down those because the second trimester is usually when we start thinking about this. Although, if you're a planner like me, I would start thinking about it right away. <laughs> um, if you decide any of these, either of these, obviously it, that's completely up to you. I'm going to give you the pros and cons of, of all different decisions, and we're just going to break it down. And it might end up being two, a two-parter episode, who knows. But we're going to just take our time through the series because I really want to make sure that I'm answering any questions that you guys might have and addressing any problems that might come up and all this stuff. So. If you have any questions, please ask. Do not just sit there and just think about these questions without getting answers. I, I would love to help you have clarity. 
So until then, thank you all for listening. Have a beautiful day.